Hey everyone, today we're doing something different. We've made plenty of videos with our 12 volt batteries and we've sort of teased a little bit about 24 volt battery, but now we're gonna be discussing our official 24 volt 8S batteries and battery kits. So we're gonna begin by giving you an overview of the new V5 8S 24 volt battery system that we're gonna be making available fairly shortly, okay? So let's first begin by what cells we're using. We're gonna be using the REPT 150 uh, amp hour, uh, 3.2 volt uh, cells. Eight of these provides us with 24 volts and allows us to make a battery that's almost identical to the uh, 4S, but these cells are essentially half the size. So we're actually gonna put an REPT 280 in comparison to kind of give you an idea of the difference in size. So as you can see, I have here a REPT 280 cell. Very nice cell, we're very happy with it. But if we see here, we can sort of see that two of these are almost the same. They're a little, ever so slightly bigger, but they're almost the same size as the uh, 280. What, why that's such a benefit to us is we're gonna be able to maximize the amount of power we have while keeping our case size essentially about the same. All right, let's talk about how we're gonna be assembling the pack. So essentially the way we're gonna assemble the pack is very similar to our 4S pack. We'll have one negative, one positive, okay? Now, we will be using separator sheets, but these are a little thinner than usual. And that's because we're sort of restricted to the width of what we can put in there. So it will provide, it is fiberglass. It's a 0.15 millimeter fiberglass sheet. So what we're going to do is essentially put one between each one and essentially, uh, you know, sort of build our pack that way. Once we're done, we're gonna show you, actually we have it here. We're gonna explain how it is, but the idea is you build this pack out, put the separator sheets, and once you have it done, you're gonna attach uh, heating pads on both sides and then wrap the bottom to secure it. So let's see how it looks like all put together. So this is how it is going to look like all put together. You'll notice we're using our sidewall heating pads, but what we have done is we're going to be attaching these in series. So what that's going to do is it's going to double the voltage, but half the total amperage. And as you can see, we've got our negative, positive, negative, positive, negative, positive, negative, positive. So here's our final negative. Here's our final positive. So that's how we've laid out the entire battery. And what we have done is we've attached the sticky pads to the sides. So we have heating on both sides. And at the bottom, we've wrapped it with capped on tape just to sort of secure our pack. So unlike the uh, 4S, we're actually gonna prepare our pack ahead of time and then insert this pack into our uh, case. So you will not have to do this. This will already be TDP done it actually will come to you already installed in the case. So everything we've explained so far is simply to show you how we're setting it up. What you will receive is actually already installed in the case, basically essentially ready for you to start uh, attaching the wires. So now let's move on to the next step. So we've ins inserted the cells. And like I said, uh, when you get the V5 24 volt kit, this step has already been done. Actually, we've already installed the plate, but we want to kind of show you the process of how we do it. We just create the pack, attach the heating pads, and then insert the entire assembly with the proper foam compression already in there. So in there, it's very stout. It will not move. But when we put on the top bracket, it's essentially going to be cemented into place almost. So the next step we're going to actually show you is the way that you will actually receive it. By the way, notice we have these quick connects, and we're going to, have to, we're going to connect these two together. And this is already will be connected and heat shrunk for you. So we'll actually show you essentially exactly what you receive when you order the V4 24 volt kit. All right, so what you're seeing here is actually what you will receive when you order the V4, uh, V5 24 volt kit. All the cells are already installed, the heating pads are installed, it's secured, they're proper, have proper orientation, and the top mounting plate has been installed. Now, you'll notice the top mounting plate's got a big, large gap in there, and that's because we're gonna be using a nice big 8S active balancer, so we need the space, but this is extra thick, so plenty of rigidity, and the fact that we already have it fit in by a foam compression, it's gonna essentially make this thing uh, 
you know, bulletproof for the most, well, don't actually shoot it, but, you know, solid as can be. And we've maximized the space. You will not find a 24 volt, 150 amp, or R145 uh, is what we will list it as for a retail battery in this size. There are bigger batteries, there are other batteries, but none of them are gonna offer the features and the convenience for the form factor as the one we'll be offering. So that's essentially to kind of give you an idea of where we are. And then now let's we'll just start the build and, or I like to call the fun part and sort of see how it is. Also, by the way, this will already be done. If you ever need to disconnect it, just take this heat shrink off and disconnect it. But this is how it, your heating pads are set up. So we've got power coming in and power coming out. Effectively, we've made, transformed our heating pads into 24 volt, three amp pads versus the 12 volt, uh, 7.6 amp pads that they are normally. All right, so let's get on with the build. All right, so now let's sort of begin by the next step, which is going to be installing your bus bars and stuff, and uh, basically also the wiring harness and stuff. We get a pretty big wiring harness, we'll get to that in a second. But first, let's actually talk about the bus bars. So we've been transitioning to these flexible bus bars. And this is sort of a mini bus bar. You may have seen some that are larger that are built for the 280 size cells. Well, this is a mini one designed for, for these cells. And normally you would just place them on, but the REPT have a larger contact area, something that is being interrupted by this uh, sort of covering. Now, let's see what you normally have in a smaller cell. So these are, again, small factor cells, okay? And in these situations where you've got the standard typical round uh, stud, you can use these. They are able to fit, provide a little bit of adjustment, and they don't interfere with the cell. But in this case, it will not work for us because if we take this and put it on, we'll actually be rubbing portion, a part of our contact with the actual heat shrink. So in order to correct that, you'll need to take a utility knife, sort of score through the top, and then essentially remove this uh, sort of covering. And once you do that, you'll end up with sort of these bare flexible bus bars. Now, it should still be fine, and you can see the top and bottom layers are okay. The middle layers are copper. So what that's going to allow us to do is give us nice full contact area so that when we do install them, they go in perfectly and provide 100% contact area without interruption. So we're going to make sure you use paper towels and 91% isopropyl alcohol, and basically we're going to prepare our bus bars have them nice and clean and installed, and then we're gonna start working on the wire harness and go from there. Okay, let's now talk about the wiring harnesses for the 24 volt kits. So we'll start off with our active balancer and BMS cell monitor cable. Just like the 4S, it's a combination harness, which means it will come pre-crimped and you essentially will basically have um, this ready to go. This one goes into the BMS. This one goes into the ATIS Active Balancer. Okay, so again, this will be cut for you, ready to go. Now, let's talk about the main harnesses. And these are a little different. As you can see, we're using 90 degree bent uh, lugs. And we need that because we don't have as much space on the 24 volt versions. So, your blue wire and your red wire will use 90 degree bent lugs. And again, this is already pre-crimped, pre-cut, ready for you. You're simply going to install them. And this is the main negative wire. It uses our traditional standard lug, but they both have uh, the same sort of setup where they're going to go in and we're going to essentially be installing them. So that is about how these are set up. And the next step is we're going to go ahead and install and set them up so that we can get these mounted. All right, so now we're gonna be uh, installing the wire harness. Before you begin, make sure everything's wiped down. As you can see, there's a little bit of dirt residue that came off. So extremely important that you clean 
your terminals with some isopropyl 91% or some other uh, electronic safe cleaner slash deg degreaser. And you're going to start off with the black wires, which are the first ones, and basically go down this harness and sort of mount it. We start off with the blue wire, which is connected to our final negative, and we'll work our way all the way down till we get to our final positive and install it there. By the way, just a reminder, this has been heat shrunk, and this is how you will receive it. So this is already done for you, but if you ever needed to dismantle it, you would need to remove this heat shrunk and disconnect it. But anyway, we're going to uh, start mounting these wires, and we'll show you how it looks like when it's all said and done. The thing, you want to use insulated uh, tools. No impact drivers or power tools. You want to use a basic tool, and you'll torque these down between 4 to 6 Newton meters. Okay, a little bit about how we're actually mounting these lugs. The actual connecting wires are going to be connected directly to the bus bar. So these are large diameter bus bars. So they act like a washer. So what you'll want to do is have them put directly. The other one, you want to put a small washer in there and then you'll tighten it down with a lock nut. But direct contact to, to the bus bar for the actual active balancer and the BMS voltage measuring lead should be directly to the bus bar. So we added the black one, we are on uh, the first sort of positive, and we're just gonna wait, work our way down the cells. Okay, so we went ahead and wired up all of our uh, BMS and active balancer wires, and they're sort of, it's, it's a bit of a mess, and we're gonna organize that in the next step. Uh, something to note, the ones for the positive has two. You have your main lug, then you have your BMS balancing wires, and then you have your heater wires on top of that. We're going to unloose this a little bit to get that clearance that we need, but that's the order you want. Lug, BMS active balancer lug, and at the very top you want your heater lug. And this is your positive wire. So once we have this, we're going to measure and verify everything using a voltmeter to make sure we have the correct voltage measurements. And if that's the case, we'll then start doing some cable management and cleaning this up so it's going to be easier for us to manage. Okay, guys, so we were able to do some little bit of cable management. And the way that we actually held this in, we just got some, got some spiral wrap and just kind of uh, tidy stuff up. And what this is going to allow us to do is uh, he should give us sufficient area to uh, mount the BMS because this is sort of, I mean, the... Uh, Active balancer, this is sort of where it's going to go, so we left that area clear. This is the clip that clips onto it, so it's just, just going to clip on there. And essentially, we have two rows. We have one row here, one row here, and just sort of empty space in the middle. And then our BMS balancing cable is here, and then the negative that attaches to the heating pad is there. Probably going to shorten this a little bit. We don't need to be this long, so we're probably going to shorten this one a little bit. But anyway, here's where we are so far. Uh, next step is going to mount the active balancer board and get that connected. And we did verify all the voltages, so all the voltages are looking good. So uh, now, uh, it's just on to the next step. So we connected the uh, active balancer board to its connector. And like I said, this does have the activation lead, so um, that is just gonna let us turn on the uh, active balancer when we need to, make sure it's clipped in all the way. Then we're gonna flip it around and basically mount it and secure it and bolt it in place. So that's gonna be next. Okay, guys. So we have the active balancer mounted. We also have secured the uh, riser plate. Notice that there are two cutouts and that's where we have routed the heater wires. It's not as critical over here because uh, it has an open sit on this side, but for that side, make sure you have them going through those two sort of cutouts. And other than that, everything is looking uh, fairly well. It's a little snug in there, but everything does fit. So what that's gonna allow us to do is now we have our sort of balancer wire, which is going to connect to our BMS. And again, the heater wire, which we're gonna shorten a little bit. But other than that, everything is looking good. And now we can get to actually mounting the uh, BMS plate, which is gonna be the next step. So this is the 8S BMS. It's also basically a 2000 watt capable uh, BMS. And you'll notice it's a little smaller than our 4S BMS. And that's because we do not need to use as many MOSFETs. That's the advantage of going higher voltage is that you can get away with less amps. 
So this is going to provide us, like I said, the same 2000 watts or so. And it is um, has the same functionality, including the heating ports and the RS485 uh, communication port. So we're going to take this, attach it to the top, and it's going to basically mount the same way as we do the small other BMSs. You'll have your five mounting points to install this. And then we're going to secure this with uh, four of the M uh, five of the M4 bolts. So that's going to be next. Okay, so we've mounted the BMS board. And as you can see, it mounts just like the 4S board, but now we're using the 8S. So we have, uh, we have more room to work with, which is always a good thing. Here's where our balancing lead is. And as you can see, it's sized just right, so it fits with not much room, uh, extra slack, which is great. We're not going to install this until the very end. So make sure you don't install that until everything else is done. Um, we are going to position some of our temperature probes. We'll probably put one on this cell and sort of one on this cell. For the 8S, we also have a thermal disconnect uh, uh, switch. So we're going to mount that directly onto one of the cells. Uh, actually, probably just on the QR code so we can get the exact temperature of the cell. So that's going to come up next. We're just going to secure these via a Kapton tape. And after that is done, we're actually going to start working on the lid and uh, mount things on the lid and then sort of start attaching everything onto the BMS itself. Now, uh, you can actually go ahead and attach these, uh, this blue wire to the BMS. So we're going to clean this off with isopropyl alcohol and attach it here. So what that's going to allow us to do is have a nice secure connection. So that we're going to do, uh, but the red and the black uh, lead will attach directly to the case and then uh, see how it all fits together. Okay, guys. So we've done some, uh, I guess, some mounting and some uh, route, wire routing. Uh, let's sort of begin. Um, we added the thermal probe, attached it via Kapton tape to one of the cells, so that's connected there. We have uh, the temperature probe sort of routed in place. We're using some of these tie keeps. Now you get these with the kit, so that's already going to be there. So just choose the position you want. So we've got one thermal probe connecting to that uh, cell, another thermal probe connected to that cell. And uh, what we're going to basically do is uh, probably put some Kapton tape just to make sure it's secure, or you could put some silicone on top just to keep it in place. We've mounted the blue wires, so those are connected this way. Now this is just the way we have connected. You can route it the way that you prefer, So, but you have a little bit of slack, and this should come in so it's not gonna interfere with the case. We have our Bluetooth module set up. We have put a wire keep there, and it's also put some uh, of that spiral wrap on there. We left this place exposed because this is where we're going to connect our switch so that it can turn uh, the Bluetooth on or off. And then we have our sort of main positive wire, which is sort of, you know, just waiting. Again, do not connect this until everything is done. So next, we're going to move on to the lid and see how that is set up. All right, guys. Now let's talk about the lid. So the 8S is using a very similar lid to the 4, uh, 4S or 12-volt batteries. I mean, they're the same lid. Now, this is actually a 12 slash 24 volt version of our Gen 2 switch. As a matter of fact, all future versions of the Gen 2 switch will automatically be able to work with 24 volts or they can work with 20, uh, 12 volts. So one switch to handle both voltages. Uh, let's see how it is on the inside. Now, we have a couple of things going on on the inside. We've added some spiral wrap. So we recommend you sort of do that. And we've got a couple of wires coming off the switch itself, such as this is the active balancer wire. Here's the Bluetooth activation wire. Here's the thermal uh, switch thermal probe and also switch auxiliary uh, heating pad controller. This is your main positive or main positive feed. And here's your RS-485 connection, which connects the data port. So we're going to basically be connecting all this up to this, and then we'll sort of go from there. And yes, we did add spiral wrap to that, so everything is not fully secured. And let's start seeing what we'll have to do. Now, what you'll want to do is get some sandpaper, sand those tops off, and then clean it with isopropyl alcohol. It's extremely important. You don't have any ABS molding residue left. You want a clean surface. So then we'll start by attaching our uh, main negative and uh, getting there. And yes, I did connect this, but we want to go ahead and disconnect this. So before you do any lid operations, just make sure that's not connected. Okay, so that's gonna be our next step, getting our black wire mounted, and then that's gonna to attach to there. 
and then we'll uh, start working on our red wire and get that ready as well. Okay, I just wanted to show you how the black wire is. We've attached it. Main lug is on the bottom and then the main negative for the switch is on top of the lug and then we bolt it in place with the M8 bolt. And now we'll move it on to the actual case itself and mount the positive. All right, so we mounted the positive wire and this is the lug orientation we have. The lug orientation for the red is this way and basically it is perpendicular to the black uh, wire. So this is sort of how it's gonna be. And then now we're gonna sort of mount the main negatives, the BMS, uh, attach our uh, auxiliary heating uh, pad wire, our Bluetooth disconnect, and our active balancer control. All right, now everything has been wired in place. Let's just sort of go over this before we close up the lid. First, we have our RS-45 cable connected. We just rod it underneath some of the wires to kind of keep it in place and we have it plugged there. Um, we have both of our heating pad uh, negatives connected to this, both the direct switch and that. You'll want to have the larger lug on the bottom and uh, uh, one with the small diameter at the top. That's going to sandwich them in place. Should keep them in, you know, perfectly fine. Um, all of our other stuff is mounted. Our active, our BMS balancing wires are connected. Uh, Bluetooth is there. Wiring is there. The only thing left to do now is to install the rubber seal. So we'll do that next and we'll show you it's a very similar process. You want to first get some isopropyl alcohol and clean the perimeter of this sort of lip area. So go ahead and do that and clean that up and we'll show you how to install the rubber seal next. All right. So with version five, and actually even version four, we have started uh, recommending people just put a rubber seal on their uh, lids. This provides equivalent moisture pre prevention as a typical silicone sealant, actually a little better, and still maintains easy movability of the, of the lid. Installing it is very simple. You'll basically peel the adhesive on the back, start from here and you'll want about halfway a little above halfway from the top and the bottom lip and wrap it around the perimeter of the case and when you move back you'll cut off any excess and what that's going to give you is a nice flush sort of finish so that you can um, keep moisture out um, if you prefer you can still use a silicone method as well in that case you'll just put a bead of silicone inside the lip of the lid and squeeze it down and then squeegee off the access but for this one, we're going to be using the rubber method. Very simple. I'm actually going to install it and show you how it looks like when it's done. And uh, it's included with the kit, so go ahead and get that done. And then uh, at that point, we'll be ready to close up the lid. All right, guys. So we install the lid, and we see you have a little bit of access. So we're going to get it flush and just sort of cut, uh, use a exacto utility black and cut the access off. And that's going to give us a nice flush, uh, flush contact. Um, after that, we'll, ready to be, we'll be ready to put the lid on. So let's get that removed and start getting the lid placed on. All right, guys, we've installed the lid. And you want to make sure that when you are installing it and the wires are getting caught, make sure everything is clear. And once that's done, you can sort of view your work. As you see, we've got a nice tight seal on all corners. So that is looking very good. And that's exactly what you want. This coupled with the rubber seals is going to give us a nice tight fit, moisture resistant, and you know we have access to I/O very easily with our data port and stuff. So now the last thing we're going to do is we're going to install the handles, which are super easy. And then at that point, battery's ready for testing. Um, now we're we're not going to do a capacity test in this video. It's gone on long enough. So we'll finish up the handles and look for part two where we actually do a capacity and load test and see what kind of power we can pull from this battery. Thank you. All right, and we are finished. We verified things are working. We are going to go in and see how they look like on the app. But here you are, a completed V5 battery that is 24 volts 8S in the same case as our uh, 4S, uh, you know, 300 HP and 275 uh, EX batteries. So this is going to be a nice option for people that need higher voltage and a small compact case that is serviceable. 
that's the key thing. You can open our batteries and get into them. Uh, there are a few batteries now coming on the market that are similar form factor, but those are glued shut. You can't get into them. And they're they're using the same case we were using in our in our V1 and V2, which I mean I, I suppose has its place, but not being able to service batteries is a huge problem. And trust us, we've you know even our batteries that need service eventually we have stuff coming back. It would be far harder if we weren't able to service them. Now let's say you don't want to build this battery, but you do want a 24 volt battery. So we have a solution for you on that as well. Check this out. This is the 145 HBX 24 volt battery. It's the exact same battery as this, except it's pre-built by us. We've done capacity tests on it. We rate it at 145. And the reason we do that because we want to attribute a little bit of the capacity for overhead, such as BMS usage and whatnot. Uh, but you can expect somewhere in the range of uh, actual 150 to 151 um, amp hours of usage and around 3.8 um, kilowatt hours of actual usable capacity. But it's the same thing as the V5. We have everything pre-installed for you. So if you're looking for a battery but prefer not to build it, um, this would be an option. It is a few hundred dollars more, but you do get an eight-year warranty. And like I said, it is field tested by us before we send it out to you. So for people looking for a nice compact 24 volt battery, I would say definitely consider this and let us know. Um, this is probably going to come out later. The V5 will become is available as soon as this video goes live. This one's probably one to two weeks later. We have a few dealers that are currently using this battery. So we're getting feedback from them, tweaking some of the settings. But, uh, you know, if you are really interested, reach out to us. We can definitely get this out to you as well. All right. Well, thank you for watching this video. I know it was a long one. And uh, check back in a future video where we do capacity tests on these batteries and see what kind of real world, uh, uh, you know, usage you can get out of them, what kind of power we can pull, and, uh, you know, how, what kind of actual usable capacity we have. Okay. Thank you.